Welcome back to another Algebra 1 lesson. We're going to look at solving one step inequality. So um, just a real quick reminder to successfully watch a video at home or anywhere for that matter. Go to a quiet place, open your guided notes, watch this video and take notes while you're watching it. You're, that way you're hearing it, you're writing it, you're processing it, even read it out loud so that way you're hitting all of those types of learning. And make sure that when you're finished watching the video, that any questions that you had, email me immediately. Even if you want to pause the video and type, start typing up an email so that you don't forget your question by the end, that would be a great idea. If you come across something, you know, in class when we're in person, you get to immediately interrupt me or raise your hand and ask a question. Um, and that's not the case with a video. That's where email communication comes in. Um, handy that way you can shoot me an email let me know that you don't understand what something that I addressed in the video and I'll be more than happy to try to help you understand that so I just wanted to kind of touch base on that just to send you little reminders we're starting this new unit so we're going to jump right into this pretend this is an equal sign and we solve it the exact same way our goal is to get this x all by itself so right now i have x minus 10 is less than 15. so properties of equality tell me if i want to get rid of this minus 10 i'm in the whole 10 if i add 10 that gets it up to zero that's how we get rid of something by getting it to zero negative 10 plus 10 is zero Property of equality again tells me if I add it to this side to keep it true and balanced, I've got to come over here on the other side of my symbol and do it to the other side. So add 10 on both sides to keep it balanced. Negative 10 plus 10 is zero. That was the whole reason I did it. Now I have X all by itself and 15 plus 10 is 25. So we want to graph this. I just kind of want to touch on that really quickly. Notice it says X is less than, think about the L being squished, X is less than 25. So I'm going to put my 25 on here and I like to put a number on either side of it just to make sure that we're looking at the way a number line works, 24, 25, 26. And I know that I'm going to have an open circle because we're not including that 25. It says it starts at 25, but we're looking at all of the values less than it. So all of the values less than 25 up to 25 and we stop. Notice I have to put that open circle there to show that it comes all the way up. Like it could be 24.9976, but it can't be 25. So the open circle on 25 shows me that it comes all the way up to 25, but does not include 25. So this is X, the values of X that are less than 25. All right, let's look at this next one. I encourage you to stop the video just to challenge yourself. See if you can do this. Make sure you're taking notes on your guided notes section. Again, I want to get rid of this 24. I want X all by itself. So the goal is to subtract 24 to get that to be zero. If I do it on one side, I have to do it to the other. 24 take away 24 is zero. That leaves me with just X. 64 take or 61 take away 24 is 37. So again, we're going to draw our line. This time I'm going to do 36. 37 and 38. We're going to do a closed circle because it says it can be bigger than 37 or it can be exactly 37. So we're pointing towards all the values greater than or equal to 37. All right, so this says that we're solving a one step inequality. Again, we want to get the variable terms together. So I can see really quickly that if I subtract this 9y from both sides, it's going to get rid of it, right? 9y, take away 9y from both sides. Boom, that's 0. That leaves me with 3. And 10 take away 9 is 1, so that just leaves me with y. I got y by itself. But the problem is it's on the wrong side. If I would have moved the 10 over, then I'd have had to move the 3 over to this side, and it would have been a whole big bunch of work. But looking at it this way, we learned on that flip-flop thing that we can change the order. We like our variable to be first, so we want it to be y is something to 3. Well, since I flip-flopped the variable and the constant, I've got to flip-flop my symbol. Think about why I did that. 
Here, the mouth is open towards the three. Here, the mouth is open towards the three. So I didn't change my problem. I just rewrote it. Instead of saying three is greater than or equal to y, I want to rewrite it to say y is less than or equal to three. So come over here, get my two, three, and four. It's going to be a closed circle because I want all the values of y that are less than or equal to three. So we're pointing to all the values less than and we want to include that possible three. All right, so Miss Blevins' AT&T contract allows her to use at most five gigabytes. She can use less than five gigabytes. She can use exactly five gigabytes, but she cannot use more than five. At this point, Miss Blevins has used 3.7 gigabytes of data. So I've already used the 3.7. So I'm just going to say, okay, I've got X amount left plus the 3.7 that I've already used, and that has to be less than or equal to 5. So we can quickly see, subtract 3.7 from both sides, and X must be less than or equal to 1.3. 3 and 4, and then that makes 5. Yeah, so 1.3. So there is my inequality. We wrote it. We solved it. Boom. Alyssa has read approximately a fourth of her novel. She has read at least 112 pages. How many pages are there in the novel? All right, so I had an interruption. Sorry, I'm not sure where I was. But anyway, um, we're looking at, she's read at least 112 pages. So she may have read more than 112 or she could have read exactly 112, but we know that a fourth of the number of pages, fourth of the number of pages, of means multiply, one fourth of the number of pages is at least 112. So remember, how do I get rid of a fraction? I multiply by its reciprocal. So I'm gonna multiply both sides by four over one, because that becomes four over four, four over four is one, one times n is n. So n is greater than or equal to 448 pages. So her novel has at least 448 pages. May have more, maybe exactly 448. All right, again, getting rid of the reciprocal or getting rid of the fraction is done by multiplying by the reciprocal. So if I have negative 2 fifths, I want to multiply by its reciprocal. That would be negative 5 halves. If I do that on one side, I have to do it on the other. So multiply the other side by negative 5 halves. So 11 times 5 is 55. So I have 55 over 2. Oops, I forgot my x. So x, notice I'm flipping the symbol. Why did I change the direction of my inequality symbol? There's this rule that says if I multiply both sides by a negative number, I have to flip the symbol. I want you to think about why that is. Let's say I have 1 and 2. We know that 1 is less than 2. Let's just multiply them both by negative 1. Negative 1 and negative 2. Now which one is bigger? Obviously, my negative 1 is bigger than my negative 2. So that is why when I multiply both sides by a negative number, I have to change the direction of the inequality symbol. So 55 over 2. We know 55 divided by 2 is 27.5. So I've got... Um, this is negative 27.5, so I've got negative 28, negative 27, negative 26. So negative 27.5 is right here in the middle. We're including this point, and we want all the values of x greater than that. So there is my inequality. All right, and the last one, again, this time it's negative 13 times z to undo the multiplication we divide. And negative 13 divided by negative 13 leaves me with positive 1. Positive 1 times z is z. Changing the direction of that inequality symbol because I divided both sides by a negative. So 117 divided by negative 13 is negative 9. So I'm going to put my numbers on the number line. I've got negative 8, negative 9, negative 10. So we're starting here, including negative 9, and we want all the values of z that are less than or equal to, therefore I'm doing the closed circle, to negative 9. 
Hope this made sense. This is all I have for this lesson. Make sure that you submit your guided notes. If you have any questions, shoot me an email now. See you guys.